This is Jonathan Ferguson, Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And in this week's episode, Jonathan is taking a look at some of the weapons found in the campaign of 2022's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And I've now been presented with a truly horrific, because of course, uh, gold-plated and chrome-plated abomination that I'm now going to have to look at. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see Jonathan's take on the game's multiplayer weapons, as we'll be throwing him some cursed and customised creations to react to as well. And if you'd like to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, let's take a look at some of the weapons from Modern Warfare 2. Right, this is a Call of Duty Modern Warfare staple, what I'm going to call the AR-15, although I know for quite specific legal reasons, uh, not just to do with this game, but um, all games, the term AR-15 remains trademarked, uh, M4 isn't, so hence discussion of M4 platform. This isn't part of the M4 platform exactly, because it's different. Here, here is a real one. This is a Daniel Defence DDM4 V7, so it's pretty up to date, certainly for a museum. It's got a very different forend on it, it's, it's uh, cylindrical. Is not M-lock, which the one on the screen appears to be. That's that's a squared off type of slot. Looks like a cooling vent. It's actually for attaching bits of rail, just like we see on the screen there. And in fact, this one is set up a little similarly. Um, so this is maybe the closest we've got to this with a bit of Magpul furniture on it, not the pistol grip, uh, but the buttstock at least. And without that distinctive triangular front sight block of the AR-15, M16, M4. And you can see on this one that you don't have that massive extra sort of fence above the trigger guard and then coming up this existing reinforcing ridge. That's what this is. And there's that round, round section, classic AR upper, because this is all, the bolt is, the bolt carrier group is tubular, uh, the buffer tube is tubular, everything is tubular. And so typically this is a round, rounded outer section. Not so here. Plenty of AR receivers do have that faceted look to them. Perfectly believable and plausible as a modern AR-15, but not a real world one. They've gone their own way with it, but there's nothing sticking out as wrong. Someone could make this in the real world and it would sell. <laughs> Right, next up we have the Chris Vector. Well, sort of. This is... I mean, I have one, so I can't show you that what, I, what I mean by this. But I can tell from the sheer width, width of the magazine versus the magazine well. And what is meant to be the lower receiver of the gun, this thing's far too skinny to accommodate that very interesting V-shaped bolt in the Chris Vector. So this, this wouldn't work. The bolt has to have space to come back and down and have space for the Glock pattern magazine to, to go up into and there isn't room. This this thing, this lower part in front of the trigger guard should be maybe as much as twice as deep. Otherwise it looks okay. Um, it looks very vectory. So it's a curious, as ever, I don't know if it's a mistake or if it's a deliberate choice to distance it from the real design. Dimensional issues aside, this thing looks to handle pretty well. It seems to, given that it's 45 ACP, so a little bit more of a felt recoil punch, it does seem to emulate the real vectors. Subjectively reduced recoil. Well, it's, it's more, more than subjective. I think um, the, the sort of the overall design of it and something about the delay of that bolt coming down does, does seem to help in automatic fire. Right, well, we, we cover the um, the infamous Deagle in this series so often that I almost left it left it on the, behind in the drawers, but uh, it, it felt wrong. So here it is. <laughs> uh, Desert Eagle Mark, I think we're on the Mark 19. The one in the game has top and bottom Picatinny rails. This has the old style two notch weaver pattern rail from the old days, because this is a relatively old um, Desert Eagle, but it's of the same mark. And then they sort of stopped changing the mark and just changed the gun anyway. So you get different barrel lengths, you get compensated uh, barrels. The rails have just sort of crept in without there being a change to the mark as far as I know. Uh, and then we have the, the horrifically pimped one with the sort of titanium nitride gold barrel and com massive compensator. 
target sights, uh, red hammer, weird machined custom slide. I'm not aware of stuff like that for the Desert Eagle, but I'm sure someone's doing it. Maybe not exactly the same as that, though. All right, a little bit of a head scratcher here, although I think a version of this has been in the series before. So before we get to my issues, <laughs> the magazine on the top of this thing, clearly P90-esque, is trans semi -tra semi translucent, or is translucent, semi-transparent. You can see the rounds in there, they look, they look quite like 5.7 millimeter rounds. They are depleting, the follower is moving as the gun is fired. Probably one of the better re uh, representations of the P90 magazine feed system, which we've spoken about before on this series. It's just unfortunate that it's attached to this abomination. Don't get me wrong, it does look cool, and it almost looks like if FN decided to make a P90 A2 with a new receiver molding, they might well make it look like that. In a way, it looks a bit nicer. <laughs> so it's not, not a bad design, don't get me wrong, but it's absolutely not a P90, and I don't know why not. Negative what I signed. Negative. No eyes on the HPT. Negative. Visual on the here. One iced. It's not our. Ah! SS neutralized. All right, MP7. I have got one of our MP7s. Our only um, select fire MP7. It has the no bullets, one bullet, all the bullets uh, <laughs> symbology on it, which is always interesting. This is another oddly redesigned gun. You know, if you squint, it's quite close. The real giveaway is the lack of this distinctive slanted end cap on here, which even games that do a really hyper-stylized MP7 tend to include, because it's, it's quite a big part of the silhouette of the gun. Um, here, it's straight. All the angles are wrong, basically. But, except the shape around the trigger guard. So this, this sort of ramped up section here is represented. But for example, the selector lever is on backwards and works the other way around. So it's really quite strange because you've got this flat fronted receiver, but then an angled receiver at the back, which almost makes it look like the gun is backwards. It's not, but it, it does kind of look a bit that way. Liking the look of this, actually. Uh, we've got, I'm gonna have some issues with the furniture on this, by which we mean the handguard, the, the, well, probably not pistol grip, and the buttstock. This is the HK Heckler & Koch 21, Model 21, so H HK21. This is an HK21A1, um, so it's this, um, the first generation HK plastic lower receiver, effectively. I I'm quite taken with the reload, I think that's that's good. Um, in fact, all the, re all the weapons handling in this game so far is really, really good. Very, very naturalistic, very well done no obvious mistakes that I've seen. I say that in the case of this weapon because it does have quite an unusual setup. Being designed originally, or the platform at least, for box magazines, detachable box magazines, this is of course a belt-fed take on the H&K uh, roller, as they call it, roller locked system. They've essentially modeled this, well I think they've modeled this correctly. So instead of a top cover with a feed tray, like on most machine guns, lifted up here, this weapon operates just like in the game with a pivoting feed tray on the bottom. So a little bit awkward potentially compared to a top loading machine gun. There's a reason why most belt fed machine guns are top loading. Um, but essentially you pull your, your belt out from here, lay it across the feed tray, uh, having locked the bolt open, just like the reload animation, lock that into place, slap the handle, bolt goes forward, first round is chambered, first link comes flying out the side dropping out the side and you're ready to shoot. And of course, being an HK, that. So the camouflage on this is good enough that it's actually a bit hard to tell what the weapon is, but I do like the way they've done the camouflage. Scrim netting kind of moving around realistically on the scope there. We've got stuff wrapped around the gun and um, I think the suppressor as well. 
semi-disguising what is actually a, a take on the Barrett um, MRAD multi-role adaptive design, which was developed from a rifle we do have called the M98B. And here is the now sadly old-fashioned Barrett M98B. The most obvious change, apart from the, the colour, I think they're all sort of desert tan now, um, is a folding, more modular, more adjustable buttstock than the integral buttstock on the original 98B. This is all one aluminium forging here. Uh, big old, well not that big, but a big muzzle brake on the front for the recoil. This is a 338 Lapua Magnum. I think the gun is meant to be, in the game, is meant to be uh, 300? I'm guessing 300 Norma, which is a, a substantially more powerful than even, I think, 300 Win Winchester Magnum. So, would a, would a 300 or even a 338 cause that level of destruction? Uh, I don't think so, but um, let's not dwell on that too much. Uh, it's a dramatic effect for the purposes of the game. It's, it's probably a bit OTT. Uh, the venerable Kalashnikov, of course, is in this game. Um, I think there'd be some sort of riot, possibly in the real world, if it wasn't. And it is, so that's fine. We've clearly got different configurations available. So the version I'm looking at here looks quite a bit like the AK-203, but for some reason it has not only the side rail, which is a, an old 1970s vintage mounting solution for optical sights on the AK, on the left-hand side, but also the Picatinny rail top cover of something like the AK-200 series. They don't come with both. Um, I'm sure you could build an AK that has both. I'm not sure why you would, because you've got that slightly bit, slight bit of added weight on the left-hand side for basically no reason. Because provided your top cover fits properly and maintains zero for your sight, you wouldn't ever want to mount something on the old-fashioned side rail. Now, weirdly, grenade launcher, yep, absolutely. AKs have grenade launchers. They don't, I'm not aware of a Picatinny type mount for the GP30 series, which is what, what we're on at the moment. Uh, but weirdly, in the in the HUD, it's called an M203. Obviously it's not an M203, unless M203 now stands for grenade launcher, underbarrel grenade launcher. Yeah, it, sh it should be called whatever it's meant to be. GP25, GP30, GP34. Uh, what we do, we do have faithfully represented the muzzle loading nature of the GP series of Soviet and now Russian grenade launchers where you shove the round in from the front. Um, but I don't think anyone's got that wrong as yet. And I've now been presented with a truly horrific, because of course, uh, gold-plated and chrome-plated abomination that I'm now going to have to look at. Yeah, this is really over the top. We, we, we do have a former Iraqi regime gold-plated Kalashnikov in this collection. This That looks tasteful compared to this thing. This is two-tone with the receiver in chrome, various details in chrome, and then the, some of the, a lot of the rest of it in gold plate. And it absolutely does scream Mexican drug cartel. So <laughs> I suspect that's the, that's the, if there is a context to this, that's probably where this has come from. And in terms of it having rails and accessories on it, yep. Those guys absolutely do follow the fashions and accessorise their guns. Some of them are more old school, but yeah, some of them are quite up to date and quite Gucci, as the uh, as the saying goes. All right, we've got some very James Bond pistol action here. Uh, so the pistol is the Sig Sauer P220. We have a very spangly looking version here. Golden controls, gold plated trigger, hammer, decocking lever, magazine catch, slide lock, and a sort of custom polished slide finish. And then on the top, I don't know if you can see that on this camera, but it's a, a Sig medallion. But to be honest, I'm more interested in the gameplay here because we've got an awful lot of underwater pistol shooting. Firstly, pistols or firearms generally don't cycle very well underwater. You've got, well, you know, water's incompressible, but it can move out of the way <laughs> when it's in a body. The slide will move to the rear, but just like if you have your thumb against it or something, it won't necessarily come far enough back to fully cycle, which means you fired one shot and then nothing happens. 
what we shall call pistol caliber bullets for the purposes of this of this conversation go so slowly relative to rifle caliber bullets that they are slowed right down coming out of the muzzle so you get one shot off because the mechanism is probably not going to cycle fully and then the bullet will slow down so within oh, definitely no more than two meters probably less that bullet's going to be completely non-lethal john wick 3 covered this quite nicely with the little pool where he's shooting underwater and the two of them are trying to shoot each other and the bullets just go huh. which means this is all nonsense you can't swan around shooting people whilst underwater Swan around. Oh, I didn't even mean that. No, I didn't. Okay, I had to squint a bit at this rifle because I'm pretty sure it's based on the FN SCAR, but a bit like the Not P90, this is not a SCAR. <laughs> the lower receiver is really quite different. Uh, the enlarged trigger guard, the SCAR has like a fairly slick sided shape to the low receiver albeit with the beveled magazine well this has a, a weird light lightening panel cut into the side of it which makes it look quite different but the ambidextrous magazine catch lever is a bit of a giveaway as to what the inspiration is here as is the well some of the design cues on the upper receiver it, it's more like a scar than it is anything else and the made up french name on the side would, would also suggest that it's trying to be belgian or not be belgian for whatever reason and i think that, that makes this probably the most scary is probably that take on the what's sometimes called the ugg boot buttstock because it especially in the brown <laughs> it looks like a looks like an ugg boot So when you, when you switch to your pistol, which as we all know is quicker than reloading, you get rid of your rifle and you pull out your pistol and you do a two-handed hold on it. It seems what they've now added is when you run out of ammunition on your rifle, as you will see in some tactical drills, the shooter takes their firing hand off the pistol grip, holds the rifle to one side, draws the pistol with one hand and continues shooting with the pistol. So you're effectively, it, it is, it's a temporary solution. You've seen it in action movies, certainly where you defend yourself or whatever with the pistol, reholster that, then you get back to reloading your rifle. So it's even quicker <laughs> than switching to your pistol. So it makes sense that Call of Duty as a franchise would be the first to represent that. So I, I do appreciate that. All right, guys, I know you were probably waiting for that one. Those are the guns of Modern Warfare 2. 2, as I'm now going to call it. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, perhaps you'd like to head over to the Royal Armouries YouTube channel and see what we're doing over there. As a UK National Museum, we have three sites you can come and visit. Obviously, harder if you're not in the UK, but if you're ever in this area, this part of the world, please do come and see us. Uh, you can also check out our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter accounts if you would like. Um, but whatever you do, see us again here next week. <laughs>